Hey everyone, so it's Saturday, July 23rd. I have a big day ahead of me. I'm headed downtown to meet my mom for lunch in Yale Town. Then I have a big day seeing friends and going out for a Y2K early 2000s inspired evening. Not sure how much I'll vlog, maybe do some shopping. Um, for those that are new here, my name is Tor. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, to Anthropology. This will be another weekly style vlog. But yeah, this is just like the intro. If you're new here, I make content all around fashion, handbags and whatnot. Now we vlogs as well. So if you're interested, keep watching. Hey everyone, so here we are at our first stop, which is the Leisure Center. This is a mixture of luxury, more alternative fashion, as well as luxury consignment. Um, this store is based in Yale Town. I put the address in case anyone is interested in going. They had a lot of really cool things a lot of things that i've never seen before from brands that are a little bit more um, niche or alternative not necessarily the mainstream they also had a cafe which i thought was really nice as well as some art installations this was my first time to this store i had never been before um i'd walked by a few times but i never walked in for whatever reason i wasn't really sure what they had to offer but it was much larger than I expected. And they also had quite a few new pieces. So here we have the Balenciaga, what is this? The Kiss Bag, as well as the Gossip. Um, they had a lot of vêtements, more street style, um, definitely more street fashion. And then they also had some really nice Loewe pieces, which we can see here. I think this, the Amazon, Amazona, I'm not sure, but I love the green, so cute. Over here is their consignment portion. Apparently this consignment store is new as a physical location, but they've existed as a website for three years. I really liked this little yellow Celine Nano. I believe the color is Citroen. They also had this BB Jody. This one looks super new. Um, I wasn't really sure if this one was consignment or if this one was new. The layout was a bit confusing, but they had a lot of vintage pieces like this vintage Celine. They also had quite a few Balenciaga pieces, this Prada bag, and this Peekaboo. I loved the color. So cute. And the prices weren't that bad. Um, all prices are in Canadian. They had quite a few Birkins, quite a few Chanel bags, quite a bit of LV as well. Um, everything was just out on display and yeah here we also have my mom's twist bag I think it's so cute I mean I don't know if it's for me but I definitely like it for her and here we are at lunch at Ropa de Mati it's a really nice Italian restaurant in Yale Town Crazy how many consignment stores there are now, right? Mm. Oh, this is actually only oh, two thousand. That's real lizard. This is an old Celine. It's two thousand dollars or something, and it's real lizard in the front. Mm. How cute is this baguette? It's so interesting. It felt so cool to touch. They have so many different bags. There's me in the mirror. I loved the Goyard pieces as well. What do we think of Goyard? There's nowhere else to buy it in Vancouver except consignment. Um, and here is me with the Nano, with the Exotic and the Nubuck. I really liked it. It looked sort of just plain, but then in certain lights you could see the lizard scales reflect. It was around 2,500, which I thought wasn't that bad. So this is mine and yours. Definitely check it out if you're in the area. How cute is this? Hey. 
Phantom style. I like that. That was a little bit though. They had quite a bit of Chanel ready to wear. I really like this cardigan, especially with the little deer. Really cute, um, under 2K, not sure what it really retailed for, but they also had this set, which was really nice. I think it was cashmere, super, super soft. And <laughs> do you guys remember this? So I sold this to them. Um, looks like it hasn't sold, but they are currently selling it for around 650 um, Canadian. Oh my God. Wait, should we put some on? <laughs> Oh my, oh my god, what is that? <laughs> ah, Chewy Vuitton! I should be doing this. Just so I'm you this dead. <laughs> here we are at Modicel. Um, we've been here a few times before, but I wanted to check out this city bag. It was a fairly good price. It was around $5.95 Canadian. It has since sold um, now, but I really liked the color. I thought the price was really good, but for some reason it didn't look that great on me I don't know I just wasn't feeling it as much as I tried it on compared to when I saw it online um, so I guess it really just goes to show that sometimes it just looks better online or it's better in fantasy than it is in reality but I know these bags are super hot right now and then here we are at Celine and Holt Renfrew I wanted to try on this new Ava bag in the tan with the giant triumph I wish they didn't put the big embroidery on it. It honestly just gives it like a Western cowboy feel, which is not the vibe that we're going for, but I just really like the tan color. Let me know what you guys think. So here we have one of the new Celine Nanos in the color khaki. I really like it. It's like an army green, very, it's like kind of swampy, but I'm kind of here for it actually. I actually really like it. I think it would complement my yellow one really well. What do you think of this color? It's definitely pretty. Not the stain. Hey everyone, so checking in. Just walking through a park in Vancouver, Nelson Park. Very pretty. I'll include some of the footage that I did that I took at Holtz. Just saw a few things. Um, I don't know how much I'll be vlogging today, but I'll be showing me going to the box later, which is a cabaret show, so stay tuned for that. Hello everyone. So Happy Sunday. So last night we ended up going out to the Fox Cabaret, um, which is a club on Main Street in Vancouver. It was pretty fun. It was 90s and Y2K night. So there was a lot of that type of music, a lot of bangers. So in this vlog, I don't know how much of the week I'll be showing, but we have a lot of fun stuff coming up on like next weekend. It's Pride Week in Vancouver, so I'll definitely be including a lot of the Pride festivities um, in this vlog, and then obviously whatever else I do during the week. Um, yesterday we ended up going to three separate luxury consignment stores in Vancouver, which I thought was pretty fun. All of them were located in Yelltown. I was with my mom and it was great. Um, she ended up getting one thing from mine and yours, and I saw that Celine Nano with the um, lizard and the new bug. Oh my god, so pretty. Around 2500 I really liked it, but yeah. We're trying to be mindful, y'all. We're trying to be mindful, so didn't get it. But yeah, just wanted to check in. Um, want to see how people are liking these vlogs. Do you like these 
weekly more informal more chit chatty type vlogs One, so this will be the q a portion um welcome to thursday july 28th so i solicited some questions for a q a type video just for you to get to know me better so i have them here just on my screen quite a few of you submitted questions so thank you for all that submitted if there are any questions that were missed or that you want to answer following this video, please put them down below and I'll answer them in the comment section. If you can hear a fan, sorry, you know, it's 35 plus degree weather right now in Vancouver, Heatwave Central. I need this or else I'll like fully melt. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so the first one is from Nick J. Snell. Hi, Nick. And he asked three questions. So what is your favorite brand a brand that you'd like to buy from but never have, and a brand that you would never buy from. So, thank you, Nick, for your question. The first one, my favorite brand, I would say my favorite brand as a whole is probably Celine. I don't think that's probably a shock to anybody. I just like their general aesthetic. Um, it is like a lighter Saint Laurent, so like jeans, t-shirt, um, nice jackets, nice simple bags, you know. I feel like I really align well with that aesthetic. A brand that I would like to buy from but never have would have to be Chanel. You know, I've talked a bit of smack about Chanel, but I would eventually like to get a piece from them. I'm not sure what that piece is, but eventually I would like a little CC something. And a brand that I would never buy from. I mean, I'm not sure if there's a brand that I would never buy from, but maybe Dolce & Gabbana. You know, they have a fairly controversial past with a lot of the comments that they've made. They've really tried to rebrand and come out of it unscathed, but I think the damage has been done. And there's just nothing Dolce & Gabbana that I am fairly interested in. And I feel like they've sort of dropped off just like a little bit. I would say, yeah, they're a brand that I probably wouldn't buy from. So that's that. Next is Danny from This Is Danny O. Hi, Danny. Thank you for your question. So the first one is, which YouTube channel would I recommend for mindful consumption? Great question. I would recommend Christina Micas. She is a fellow Canadian YouTuber here. She makes a lot of content around mindful consumption, um, how to purchase better, decluttering and whatnot. Also, Colorful Noir. I believe her name is Eileen. She makes a lot of luxury mindful consumption, luxury minimalism type content. Um, so if you're following this channel, you probably are also following hers, but if not, definitely check both of those people out. Next, this one is from Melissa Adams Wade. Hi, Melissa. Um, so the first one, this is basically a question around what do I do for a living? So I mentioned it before, I work for Lululemon. I work um, in PNC, so basically HR, people in culture, and I work in sort of onboarding and back-end talent recruitment process, if that makes sense. So more on the back-end side of things, but I work within HR as my day job. So this one is from Dapperly Grungy. Hello, hello, hello. So this question is, would I justify spending $8,000 to give myself a birthday gift? Something many here on YouTube do just to justify a purchase. Um, this is from my five bags I'm obsessed with in relation to the Balenciaga Look at Gold bag with the crystals. So basically, would I justify spending extravagant amounts of money on a birthday gift? Yes, and I have. The Mimi bag that I got, that was sort of like a birthday gift from me to me, and that one was quite expensive. So I have justified a lot of money in as like a birthday gift. I think it's okay to justify that, like you're giving yourself a present. Um, if it becomes like a full random habit where just like here and there, which I've definitely fallen into, but as a birthday present, I think it's totally fine. Like why not, it's your birthday. Next one, this is from Kate EF. Thank you for your question. So if I was to go back to any other decade pre-2010, what decade would I choose based on clothing, style, and options? Good question. I would honestly go back to whenever Mary Antoinette was around. So let's see, let me just pull up the Googler. I would go back to the 1770s. The 1770s, the 1780s, way back in the day, I want that regal style where it's just layers upon layers. I have a Mary Antoinette tattoo. So it's just like the extravagance, the opulence, the insanity of it all. I would definitely go back there. So thank you for that question. This one is from Lauren Romeo. Hi, Lauren. 
My thoughts on Old Celine versus New Celine. I, in the beginning, was not a fan of New Celine. I thought it was Saint Laurent 2.0, which it sort of was in the beginning, but that's just like Hades for Men's aesthetic. I preferred Old Celine's bags. I think that's, you know, most people at this point, the Phoebe Philo era Celine bags are the bags that people associate with the brand. I have come to warm up to new Celine as it's like Heidi Sloman has really found his lane, he's really found his style, his aesthetic that he's working in. And I think it's pairing fairly nicely as sort of a compliment to old Celine as well as a compliment to Saint Laurent, sort of like the lighter version of it. Um, yeah, at first I didn't like it, now I do. Okay, this one is from Javier Alexander. Hello, what made you decide to get into YouTube and how have I found it so far? So I actually went <laughs> back in, when was it? Honestly, it might have been 20, 2012, 2013. I started a YouTube channel. This one actually, different name though. I've just kept it going since then. And I just wanted to, you know, broadcast myself. I lived in the middle of nowhere, Quebec. I wasn't surrounded by many people. So thus being of the internet age, I turned to the internet to meet people. And then that died away. When the pandemic happened, um, so early 2020, I had been toying with the idea of basically wanting an outlet where I could explore all the things that I'd like to talk about, um, basically in anthropology. So like analyzing things, questioning things, stuff like that, but also talk about fashion because I was no longer in the fashion industry or like retail and I just wanted like an outlet where I could connect with like-minded people with people that were interested in these topics so I wouldn't be boring my boyfriend just talking about all the bags that I wanted I could talk to other people that actually cared so that's why I decided to get into it it's been over two years now that I've been running this channel I feel like it's been going fairly well as like a hobby side thing um, I found it great I'm loving where the channel is going I love that it's monetized now, so I'm making a little bit of extra money from it each month and I'm going to be reinvesting it back into the channel. And I'm just excited to see where it goes, how far it grows, if it if it keeps growing, if it doesn't, like I don't really mind. It's just, I'm really happy that I decided to do this and that I have this creative outlet, this hobby, and this way of connecting with other people around the world. We don't have that many more. This one is from April, May. Where was I before Vancouver and why did I move here? So before I lived in Vancouver, I lived in Montreal, Montreal, Canada. Hello to everyone there. I lived in Montreal for four years before that I lived in like random small town Quebec, but I loved Montreal, but I had just gone through a breakup. I was just starting university. And I was, my parents had decided to move to Vancouver. So I decided why not try a new city? Why not try something else? I had previously grown up all around Canada. So I lived in Alberta, Ontario, Quebec, but I never lived in BC and I love just like the vibe of BC. It's very like chill, very calm, very like all about the ocean, all about like good times and relaxing. And I just felt like that was my vibe. And I was sick, 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 sick of minus 40 degrees Celsius winters. I just couldn't do it anymore. There was like no way I could go through another disgusting, super cold winter and like talk about it. Like I wanted to get out. I wanted to get where it was hot. Now it's like a little too hot, but what can you do? I just, I needed to get out. So thank you for that question. The next one is from Royo Dios. Are you married? I'm gay and engaged and freaking the F out and need to know what's the difference than just being a couple. Thank you for your question. I'm not married. Um, my partner and I have been together for almost five years now. And honestly, between, between you and me, it might be heading that way. We are technically a common law couple. So we're in like a common law marriage in the eyes of a government. So like we're sort of married. For tax purposes, we are basically married, but we haven't gone through a marriage. We don't have like the rings, whatever, whatever. It's not a big priority for us right now. Not a lot of things would change. Um, I don't think a lot, well, you know, because I haven't gone through like a marriage, I can't say things change or things don't. A lot of people that we know have gotten married. We went to a wedding, which I've showed here. So I would love to have a wedding, not anytime soon because A, they're so expensive and B, I'd rather just spend my money on other things. But eventually I'd like to have a wedding. Hey everyone, happy Friday. So I got a few more questions for the Q&A, so I'm just gonna do them now. So this one is from Karen. Hey Karen, 
So Karen asks, do I think that some luxury YouTubers go into debt buying bags and jewelry? I definitely do. Um, I don't know the financial situation of all of the people that we all follow on YouTube, but debt can mean a lot of things to different people. Just having a credit card balance can mean debt. So I definitely think that some YouTubers definitely go into debt buying these bags in order to show on the internet. I think there was also like a Refinery29 or one of those style videos where they actually spoke with someone who tried to be an Instagram influencer and she ended up going into like $11,000 worth of debt over plane tickets and bags and whatnot to portray a certain lifestyle. I'll link that down below if I can find it because uh, it definitely rings true for that. Um, another question, what are my thoughts on safety issues carrying bags and logos like Chanel, LV, and Hermes, as well as wearing Cartier jewelry? Do high-end bags make people a target and what are some tips, tips to stay safe? I actually have a video coming out soon on safety and luxury, so I'll defer to that, but um, I definitely think that there are occasionally issues with carrying luxury bags. I definitely feel that way sometimes and tips to stay safe is just be vigilant, honestly. Know where you are, know your surroundings, know who's around you. Do I think that I'll get tired of luxury in the future? You know, maybe. I definitely don't think I'll have the same like lust for it as I do right now. I can already sort of feel it shifting a little bit where I'm not as interested in constantly shopping anymore. A, I just don't have the funds for it. And B, there's just nothing that I really want anymore. Like, yeah, there are things here and there that I'm like, oh my God, I would love to add that, but I'm not really going out of my way anymore to get things. Like I leave things in the idea phase. I don't really action anything. But yeah, like I definitely can see it starting to wane slightly, but I guess we'll see where it goes. Like I'm probably always gonna love handbags and whatnot, but I may just not be collecting them like I do now. Thanks for your questions, Karen. Hey everyone, so a few extra questions came in, so I'm just gonna get to them now. So this one is from It's Only War Paint. The question was, if you had a big lottery win, do you think you would continue mindful slash low buy spending? That's a great question. Um, honestly, it's really hard to say. <laughs> you know, I've definitely fantasized about winning the lottery before. If I were to win the lottery, I like to think that I would continue some sort of mindful spending, mindful consumption habits. There would be definitely things I would tick off the list right away. You know, would I be buying a Chanel bag? Maybe. Would I add to my Celine collection? Probably. But I would definitely put a cap on it. Like I wouldn't want to just go hog wild and buy everything. So I would try to the best of my abilities to continue mindful slash um, low buying just so I could obviously keep some of that money for later. Thank you for your question. This one is from Miho Karayama. I believe you go by Michelle here as well. So there are a few questions here. Um, how do you budget for luxury items? Honestly, sometimes I don't. I just sort of buy them and call it a day. I should be budgeting though. I really should be, but I, I don't always. Do you bring your luxury bags when you travel both domestic and international? Um, I answered this before, just a little bit earlier. I don't really travel with them. Um, my nylon product pieces I do, but for the Celine ones I don't. Which occasion do you use your luxury bags the most? Honestly, anytime I go downtown, like if I'm going for a lunch, if I'm going for just like a shopping day, if I'm going out to dinner, then I will definitely wear my bags. Um, sometimes even just to go to like the grocery store, like the pet store. Then ooh, we have one about Vancouver. So how much are the living costs in Vancouver? Uh, Vancouver is very expensive. It's one of the most expensive cities to live in in the world. Rent here is around $2,000 to $3,000 for a two bedroom in Canadian. We spend around $1,000 a month on groceries. We spend, the living costs are high. It's, it's an expensive city to live in. Okay, now some about my job. What kind of work do I do for Lulu? Um, I mentioned this before, so I work in HR or PNC. What is my favorite item from Lulu? Honestly, the Blissfeel Runners. I have three pairs of them. I absolutely love them. I want all of the colors. I wear them literally every day now. I rarely wear designer shoes anymore. I just wear those, honestly. Would you want to own an Hermes bag? If yes, which style and why? I 
If I was to own an Hermes bag, it would probably be a Birkin 25 or a Kelly 25. I like the size. Even um, a mini Kelly would be good, but I think a Birkin 25 would be the one that I would go for. You know, the price is a no-no, but the bag is a yes. What color would I get? I love the gold color with the gold hardware. Oh, so pretty. Anytime I see that on YouTube, I'm just like, that's a beautiful bag. But the price is up. Then the last one, do your close friends like luxury shopping and luxury bags as well. My close friends don't, they they don't. Um, the only exception I would say is Jess Delta by J. I mentioned her a few times on this channel, but she would be the only friend that I have that I think likes luxury goods. Hey everyone, welcome to Saturday. So we're actually doing something a little bit different. I'm going to the pet store. I'm actually gonna get some more fish, so I'll bring you along with me. It's Heat Wave Central, so that's all we're doing. But uh, yeah, let's go see what fish they are at the pet store. I'm like, let's come home with me. Okay guys, that was 1,000% of fail. All the fish looked kind of questionable. Like, there were dead fish like everywhere. And the ones that were alive were all last legs. So, no new fish today because I would rather not get fish and wait than get fish that are like on the verge of death. So, I mean, at least we got to see something, you know. Hey everyone, happy Sunday. So today is the Pride Festival in Vancouver celebration thing. I am getting ready to go. Robin and I are going, we're meeting up with some friends. I have like a full day planned, I guess. I don't know, I'll bring you along with me. But yeah, I'm just getting ready now. People are probably like, why aren't you wearing rainbow? We're all going as one of the colors. So I'm going as green, turning myself into disgust from inside out. I wanted to go as a yellow, but I didn't want to bring my Celine bag downtown. I don't know, Vancouver is kind of like a ratchet and it's going to be hectic. So I decided to go and try and be more chill about it. So I'm bringing this today. A little lemon bag because it goes well with everything that I'm wearing. Green, green, green. I have this green stone that I actually turn backwards. I actually got this for Robin when I was in New Zealand, but it goes with the Luke. So I'm wearing it, not him. He's going as the color purple. But what's new with everybody? I'm also, you know, since it's pride, I'm gonna be adding a little bit of something something. So I just have this pink, what is this? In Living Pink, is that gonna focus? I don't know. From MAC, I like to apply it under my eye. It gives sort of a, I don't know. I just like the look that it gives. So we're starting the festivities at Joe Forte's. I've never been to Joe Forte's, it's downtown. I think it's like a seafood restaurant, but apparently it has a really good view of the parade. I'm trying to pick out shoes. I don't know which ones to wear. This is how I keep all my shoes. Lululemon forever. I think I might wear these ones just because they go with green. Let me show you what I'm wearing. So this is the Luke. Lululemon shorts. Little lengths. Green peace and quiet shirt. Oh my god. Wow, the lighting in here is awful. But these are all of the shoes. Like, I could do this. But I don't know. I kind of want to. I want it to be nicer. I could also do these. Or I could also do these. Let's see. 
Like it's got enough green. Do we prefer that? I prefer that to be honest. So here we are on the rooftop of Joe Forte's. It's a really nice restaurant downtown. Highly recommend for anyone looking to have some nice seafood in Vancouver. We had a really good view of the parade route. Um, it went through Robson and Thurlow. Thurlow holds all of the luxury stores, which you can see here. There's Prada on the corner, St. Laurent, Montclair. And it was just such a fun day. We ended up eating some nice seafood. I got a lobster and shrimp roll, which was so good. And it was just so nice to see everybody celebrating. It was the first Pride Parade since 2019. So it's been a few years and everyone was out in full force. Although the Pride Parade is normally much longer, but this year it was a little bit shorter. Um, but yeah, it was just super exciting and super fun. Yeah. I should join something like that. Are you kidding? All right. That's my video. Thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, let me know if you want more of these daily weekly vlog type stuff. And I hope to see you all next time. Bye guys.